I never really had a plan for this video. I sort of just said, hey, can I just talk about Grand Blue Fantasy Versus for a minute because I haven't talked about it in a while. You know, characters been coming out, content's been pumped out. What do I think about the game still? Honestly, my thoughts haven't changed much since the last time I played it, but I feel like now I could actually make a video talking about my full, full thoughts of the game. I apologize if I stutter a lot. That's just something that comes with me. I really do apologize. I, I can't prevent that. I try so much. <laughs> um, I want to talk about the game in general because I don't get to talk much about this game and I don't hear really anyone talk about it anymore. Yeah, when a, char when a character comes out, people you know start talking about it, but like, as for now, the game's, you know, not it's not dead, but it's dead in like the consciousness of people, if that makes sense. Like people don't talk about the game. So I wanted to talk about it in my experience with Grand Blue Fantasy Versus. Now, uh, I would say that let me get let me get one of my main positives out of the way. The game looks just gorgeous. Like, look, I have never I was never familiar with Grand Blue's art style, right? I was never familiar with Grand Blue's art style. I was never familiar with the characters. I knew the characters. I, I knew some of them at least, but I didn't know anything enough to say, "Hey, man, this whole ass game looking so good and everything." So, I didn't know. But like when Arxis announced that they were making a Grand Blue game, I didn't know what to think, but I knew that since they were using the same graphical styles, fighters and Dragon Ball, uh, uh, pfft, I said Dragon Ball, I'm dumb. Uh, Fighters and Guilty Gear XR sign, well, Guilty Gear XR in general. I was like, really, I was really, yeah, I, this is awesome. And then like when they showed it also characters the first time, I was like, man, this is really good. They, they're really perfecting this art style. Like, since Strive isn't out yet, I could easily say that Grand Blue Fantasy Versus is the best looking game Arsus has at this moment. Again, freaking, once Strive comes out officially, I can actually talk about that game if I get it, because. I'm, I'm, I'm not too keen on buying these games on launch anymore, but the point is, yeah, and even like the like the gallery and like the character art that's used in Grand Blue, it's really good and detailed art. I like it so much. Like, hell, if I could have like Grand Blue art in my room, I would totally just get some, but you know, I can't afford that shit. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the game looks amazing. Like, moves look great, the characters look great. Like, everything just looks so good. Like, it, it, it like just. This is Arxis we're talking about, so every game of theirs look good, but like this looks a special kind of good, and I like that. Um, another positive I like is the music. Now, the one thing I don't like about the music is that, like, you know, you know how you get the RPG mode and you get like the boss themes, like you get the Colossus theme, you get the Rose Queen theme, et cetera, et cetera. The fact you can't play those songs in versus mode bummed the hell out of me, and I don't like that. I, I kind of don't like you can't fight to those songs in versus mode. I don't like it when there's some songs in like a certain mode and you can't even play them in the versus mode or just by yourself. Like I hate that. Like it just it sucks. Because those are some good ass themes. Like the only one that kind of makes an exception is like what Paradise Lost. But you need Beelzebub and Belial for that, and I don't have Belial, so I'm locked out of Paradise Lost unless I go to the gallery. And it's the gallery, you know? But you know, it doesn't matter. That's not gonna break the game for me. I just don't like it. Plus hell, if you're like, hey man, if you don't you can boot up Spotify or just listen to music on your own. You know, that's a really dumb roundabout way to do so, but you know, whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, like the game's music is really, really good. I don't like, there's some character themes that I don't vi vibe with. Majority of everyone's themes look sound amazing. So, you know, there's that. I haven't heard the newer themes of characters like Eustace yet or uh, Air Urine or whatever his name is. A Aire, like the, 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 the short dude with the mustache. I, I, I'm, I'm losing my brains on these characters. I, I should honestly be knowing them before I start making videos like this because, I mean, I don't wanna like just tie a toe around their characters. I remember like DLC wise, I remember you, like the most recent at least, Eustace, Yule, I can't remember what that short dude was. I, I know his name. It's like, it's, it's gonna come to me eventually. Onre, 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 something like that. I, I know his name is like, his, his Japanese name, is that that Japanese name is Uno. So it took me a while to remember what they use in English. I, I know Grand Blue uses some characters' names differently in Japanese than they do in English, which is weird, but like I don't know. I feel like we moved past that kind of thing already. You know, like when we have characters like have different names from their Japanese and English counterparts. I kind of figure we move past that in these days, but whatever. I don't know why these characters would need an English name. I don't whatever. Anyway. Yeah. I can say at least the characters in Grand Blue look awesome. Now, now the characters get tied to like the DLC, like the majority of characters these days. That includes characters like what Cheetah, 
uh, Bleal. You can unlock Beelzebub. Uh, characters like Zoe uh, is locked behind the DLC, Andre himself, Yule, Narmaya, Soros, uh, what, what else was I? Cal. God, what was that? What was their name? Cal. Cagliostro. Cagl Cagliostro? Cagliostro. I don't know. I, I apologize if I, I butchered their name, but Cagliostro uh, and Eustace. And there's also one more character as, a, uh, you know, going to be revealed later down the line. But yeah, like, the, I don't like the DLC this game. I'm going to be straight up. I do not like It's not the DLC characters I don't like. It's the DLC. Like, the thing is about this game is that it's a 60 buck game on launch that rarely goes on sale. That you get 11 characters, plus if you play through the entire RPG mode, you don't want Beelzebub. Or you can just buy him, you know, if you don't want to go through all that. Which, RPG is most long, so if you don't want to do that, you're going to have to force to buy Beelzebub. I personally did it because I wanted to play the RPG mode, and I'm not spending money on a character I can just unlock in-game, so hell to that. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, like... I don't like the DLC of this game. It's a 60 buck game on launch with you know, barely any characters in it. And then you have to pay 30 bucks to get the first season pass and 34 bucks to get the second season pass, which mind you was announced the f at the moment of the first season pass. So like, I kind of feel like, like that's, that's a hundred. Let's see here, that, all that together. Let's see, that's 60 bucks for the game, 30 bucks for the first season pass. That's $90 already. And for the next season pass, it's 35 bucks. That's hundred and twenty-five dollars. Don't even get me started on stage DLC. Yeah, remember you remember like when stages were DLC, like that primitive. Why are stages DLC? And considering this one of the stages in this game is already in the game, you just can't fight it, so you have to pay for it as DLC, which is like absolute horseshit. And they they took the they took the stage out, which is perfectly functional in the game, and set it aside as DLC. I'm not gonna complain about stage DLC because you can just not buy it, but the fact that stage DLC exists in the first place is absolutely retarded. And they're four bucks a piece. And there's three stages missing. So that's an extra $12 you gotta pay for because each stage is $4. So that means on top of the 125 bucks you have to pay for the whole game together, DLC and all, that's 12 more dollars you gotta pay for stages, which means that will round out the game if you want everything, if you want the whole goddamn shebang, that is $137. And is Grand Blue Fantasy Versus worth one hundred thirty-seven dollars? No, this game's not worth it. Even even for the sixty, it is. I don't think it's worth it. It does have a good amount of stuff in it, and the RPG mode is great. Don't get me wrong, uh, but it's not. But I, I shouldn't say that. I, maybe, maybe maybe there's something else I should probably talk about before I start rounding out my thoughts about. Oh, is this game worth the money it's selling it? Um, now, let me just talk about the actual RPG mode. So the RPG mode is this big expansive mode where you take take a character you want to play as take, and then go through the modes and you play them up as a beat em up format. One, I like this idea. I like that they actually section off a whole mode that kind of lets you play the game differently. I mean, there's some jank inside this mode, don't get me wrong. Some of the boss fights become immensely painful depending on the character you pick. And there's like this one dumb ass mission on the Rose Queen stage that really, really shouldn't exist. Like it, you're, you have to run from one side of the screen to the like to the very end. Like it's like a, it's like a rush. But there would be constantly enemies, like goblin enemies, bum rushing you, and they could easily kill you on the offset without any chance. And it, it sucks ass, like major ass. <laughs> um, but the one thing I do like about RPG mode is that when every new character comes out, and they they, they continuously update the RPG mode, I like that. Some games just have their story modes utterly abandoned once they get more characters. But like, one thing I really do like about Grand Blue Fantasy Versus is that they're continuously updating their arcade mode. I'm sorry, arcade mode, my bad. Their story mode, and I like that. It's nice to give you know a chance for people to go back into the RPG mode and play it more. I like that. It's nothing. It's nothing wrong with that. Um, but yeah, like it's just it's nice to see care like you know the game uh, the RPG mode. It's pretty fun. Like they they really want you to go hand man. It's like hey, look light. Uh, this is objective. Kill these certain amount of enemies, uh, and light a light grid is uh, suggested for this battle. So you gotta like equip yourself with light based uh, items, and I kind of like that. It made me think more about oh, I can't just run in like with any other game mode and just like you know bum rush with what I got. You can, but it doesn't give you an advantage you would have unless you um, were to have a certain element to the uh, to the items you need, and I like that. 
like the RPG mode makes you at least think. And I do like the idea of them taking the mobile aspects from the game and putting it into this mode. I like that. It's something simple, but I kind of like that. They try to like bridge the gap between that. Another thing I like is uh, certain weapons that, uh, uh, weapon skins. I like that too. Like, weapon skins are something I've been wanting in Arxis games for the longest time. I know Guilty Gear never would have done it, but like, you know, I feel like they couldn't have done it. But I like the fact that they, you know, do these weapon skins. I hopefully games beyond Grand Blue Fantasy versus, you know, do that. I don't. I doubt they will though. But I, I kind of hope they do because weapon skins are cool. I mean, it's something simple, but weapon skins are cool. Imagine like freaking like Soul from Guilty Ge from Guilty Gear Strive. He willing a different weapon under his junkyard dog. I, I I would like that. It's something I want, but I cannot have. But. But yeah, anyway, I, I like the idea of them integrating the mobile game stuff into this mode. It's just, it's something simple, but I like it. You know, it's just easily just something simple. And, you know, you got a good amount of weapons to work with. If you get any duplicates, you can just fuse it into the main weapons. I haven't played much of Grand Blue outside of the two hours I've goofed around in it. So, you know, forgive me if I say something that sounds like it already in the mobile game. So, yeah. It's also, you know, customized stuff. You can also go to Sierra's shop. And Sierra is where you buy the weapons, you can buy weapon skins, you can buy support skills, you can forge weapons, you can buy... You can buy color variations, like you can buy like the colors you can use in the story mode, which... Which, the thing about it is that uh, some of these colors that you get... If you buy the DLC, you already have the colors unlocked, so... Going to Sierra's shop kind of just makes it irrelevant. You can also play the gotcha and draw for weapons, you need like 10 of these little card things these sheet things or whatever to draw the gotcha and yeah there's also a mode called tower of babel which is just essentially more rpg mode it's just more of that but you're going up an ascending tower like you don't get events and stuff like that it's more like a side thing you want to i guess a grind or whatever i don't know the purpose of um of um tower of babel but i think you get more items that way you couldn't get into the base mode don't don't get me wrong. I've only made it to like uh like what floors fifty one to fifty five the layer of the nightly paragon. I've only made it that far up and <laughs> I've only made it that far up in Tower of Babel. I may boot it up again someday, but you know that's that's another uh it's another time for now. Um, but anyway, um, but yeah, that's the most of the RPG mode in the nutshell. You also got bonus missions where you can get like you get your online missions. You can do with your friends and stuff like that. Speaking of RPG, uh, speaking of friends, you can actually play the RPG mode online with your friends, which is something I like. I I like the idea of getting a, a game mode where you can play the entire mode with your friends. I like that. It's something simple, but it's nice to see. Uh, you also got standard missions. If you do a certain amount of things, you can get like you know unlock shit. Like oh, if you get a character, a certain character to level seventy, you can unlock five um, five more of those card things I was talking about. Oh, if you delete three hundred of a certain enemy, you can do that. If you be a boss five times on our hard mode, yeah, you can get stuff like that. Uh, if you forge a certain item, which is painfully hard to do, so I know some of these uh, the items that you get to forge are like weapons that you could get like weapon skins. But like they're like their ultimate weapons of the characters and they're super hard to get a hold of. So yeah, that's that, but you know. Also if you complete a certain like a certain mode, it's like, hey, you can unlock this or whatever. Um I don't like that some of the st like like the one thing I don't like about these like the um, stand uh, bonus missions is that they integrate the DLC characters into it, even when you don't have them. So like if you unlock if you have like someone like Yule, right? Let's say Yule. You have one of her missions there, but you don't have Yule, which means you can't do the bonus missions. Or like if you, like, it, it, it kind of sucks. And speaking of DLC characters, I want to talk about the arcade mode because the arcade mode integrates the DLC characters into them if you don't have them. And that's another idea I don't like. Like it kind of just, like if you want to go to arcade mode and do some shit, it kind of just teases you over the fact that you do not have these characters. Oh shit, Belil's here? Oh, I can't play as Belil because he's DLC. Like I, I don't, like the DLC of this game. I really don't. It, it, it sucks so bad that DLC exists for this game. And I mean, I'm not expecting any of these fighting games that not have DLC. That's just, that's just like a thing that happens these days. But at the same time, I'm just like, why? Like, there's so much money. And then like, they, they, they go hard on this game saying, oh, this game is more grounded. It's more, you know, you know, normal. A normal game, like a normal kind of fighting game for like people to like to get into if they haven't played fighting games before. Some of these Grand Blue players haven't played fighting games before. So they're for these players who haven't played fighting games before. 
And while I can get that, this game's DLC practice and the costs that you have to pay to get this game really don't help people. It really doesn't. Like, it's a hard sell, really. Like, there's nothing in Grand Blue Fantasy Versus. Like, if you were to introduce a new player to this game, right? A brand new player who knew nothing about Grand Blue at all, it's a hard sell. Like, if someone wants to get in the fight, it's a hard sell. You would already kind of have to be into fighting games or just like arcs just that much to pay this much money but even so it's not worth it like it it's a hard sell because the game barely goes on sale and that kind of ties it that's funny uh but yeah the game barely goes on sale and the dlc definitely doesn't go on sale so like you still have to pay if you want everything for this game to play online with your friends and have every character available to you you're gonna have to pay a lot of money to do so and even with the characters you have, there's not enough variety, you know? Like, each character obviously plays different, but it's not enough variety to say, yeah, I will buy I buy this game for 60 bucks. It's not worth it. Your RPG mode isn't worth the amount of money either to pay this game. Like, if there were more modes, I could maybe justify it, but the roster is too small automatically to do so. You know, a bunch of people come to argue me and say, well, do you don't need bigger rosters. Each character start playing the same after that, but, like... You going to tell me you would rather you would pay a lot of money for a basic fighting game for just a small roster? You can't tell me you do. I mean, some people just don't care. Some people just buy fighting games and fighter pass because they got the money to burn. I don't, you know. And from a casual standpoint, it's not a good look for this game. Like again, I'm a casual player. I don't play fighting games seriously, but I do play them a lot, and I play them enough, obviously, to know what what's going down and shit like that. I'm not that casual. I don't just look at a fighting game and go, eh, I'll play for like three minutes and move on. I'm not that, I'm not like that. I played them enough. I'm just not a super serious competitive person about it. But at the same time, I feel like, yeah, like, 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 a, like a 16 to 17 person roster would have been nice, right? But no, you start off with 11 and then you have to buy DLC to round the rest of it out. And that sucks because this game, like, I like these characters. I like the way these characters play. Like, some of these characters are really interesting, like, like, uh, Jita. You figure that she played exactly the same as Grand, but she doesn't. I like that, you know, especially when they made her, made her DLC. Like, I'd be pissed if she played exactly like Grand and she was DLC. To hell with that. She could have just been a char character clone, but no, they actually gave her some differences, and I like that. Narmaya. Like, I don't play, I don't play stance characters and counter characters, but is pretty fun. Um, and those are the only two DLC characters I even bothered to even get a hold of. I didn't buy that damn season pass, and the only reason I even bought Jita and Narmaya was because I had money to burn on my account, and I didn't even play them that much. So that just shows how much, how much, like, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Honestly, if I had the DLC characters, I'd play this game more, maybe. Because I there's some friends I want to play this game with, I just don't get a chance to. It, it kind of sucks. Like, if I had the money for these DLC characters, I would. But that's $65, dude. That, I can get a whole ass game for that much money. Like, that's what the one thing about DLC that gets me these days. When DLC starts reaching up past $40, I could just buy another game and just say the hell with this one. I could just buy another game at that point. No DLC ever in the world will be worth the amount of money it takes me to buy another game. I could go buy a Switch game or, well, a cheap Switch game, not one of those Nintendo um, uh, first party ones when they have like 60 bucks on the offset. I, I, could, just, I could get something else. Like it's not worth it's not worth the money, and I can talk about the gameplay. Honestly, I'm not the expert on when it comes to gameplay of video games, especially in fighting games. Anything I would say would sound like I'm just running in circles because I don't I can't explain why I don't like a gameplay of a certain game. It's just like it's hard for me to describe. It's okay. So as for Grand Blue, they made a big deal about okay, look, this game is more footsie based, it's more neutral based. Um, you know, you can, there's there's that. And you know what? I like playing it from when I, you know, I got to it like semi seriously. The game is fun, don't get me wrong, but like I feel like this game is a little bit too slow. Like, again, you don't need a fast game to have a neutral base, like footsie based game, but like I feel like this game definitely needs to be sped up some because some of the characters just feel like like unplayable at this speed. Like, I like Ladiva as a character, so I wanted to play as her, and so I only like I only like grapplers. But knowing how she was fun she was in the goddamn RPG mode as a character, I was like, you know what? Let me play Ladiva. Let me try her out. Let me get you know interested you know playing this character. I don't play grapplers, but I do it for her. And it, she feels super super slow, like really unbelievably slow. And I get it, grapplers are not supposed to be fast, but like, 
Like, she feels a special kind of slow. Maybe it's because of her slow startup, which I could deal with, but like, it's just something about uh, Ladita just doesn't feel fun to play in this game, at least to me. Like, if anyone mains her, go ahead. But like, for me personally, I, I, I can't, I can't buy her. But there are some characters I like how they play in this game. For example, I like Lo Wayne and his weird ass unorthodox move set, and the fact that he can summon, <laughs> the fact that he can summon one of the uh, primals, Yggdrasil, which is actually kind of crazy. In in the like as a character to pl fight as in the like the actual battle, it's not like some kind of side thing where like the characters show up in a cinematic. No, Yggdrasil shows up on the goddamn field, and I like that. And Lo Wayne is a pretty fun character to goof around with. He's not a character I would definitely play as at all, but. I can appreciate the work and the effort to keep the like to keep the silliness to the character. I like all characters, and I like that. Like it's it was really nice to see that. But it's something about it's just the gameplay itself. Like just doesn't keep me long enough. You know, like don't get me wrong, the game is fun. It's just like it's not a game I could continuously play and say, oh my god, I love this about this game. I think one thing about this game is that like it doesn't really have much of an identity on its own. Like I, I know it probably sounds, you know, sounds like a, a a dumb comment coming from me, a person who's not really um, like well versed in the gameplay of fighting games because I'm not very good at them. But something about Grand Blue's gameplay just kind of it's a little bit too slow for me and a little bit too limiting. Like there's the cooldown system with the moves and stuff like that. I like the idea of like they giving you shortcuts to the moves. So like, if you want to use the shortcuts, you can pull off the move, but the cooldown will go will take longer to recharge. I like that because it gives you incentive to try to do the moves the regular way instead of having to force the shortcut. I like that. It's something as simple as that is kind of cool, but at the same time, I'm just not a fan of the cooldown system. You know, like, it's just like, when I want to use a special, I can't use the special. I have to wait until it's over to, you know, to do it again. And then, like, if I want to use a particularly good special, the enemy just blocks it, which means I have to wait longer. Now, granted, the cooldown system, when you use it the right way, doesn't take too long. So me complaining doesn't really, you know, uh, you know, making, you know, make a big difference. It's not really a big complaint. But I don't know. Like, something about the cooldown just doesn't jive with me all that well. But I like the way they worked with it. The one thing I don't like how they worked with is the goddamn gauge, like the, the Skybound art gauge, and. Like, the, the fact that you need a 100% of the gauge in order to even use one special sucks, dude. Like, it, it sucks so hard because, like, normally from fighting games, like, okay, you got 50% of the gauge. You got 50% of the gauge, you can pull off, a, pull off a super move and then wait for that gauge to refill up. If you got 100, you can pull off a super special, a super, super move, like an like a insta-kill or something. But, no, the thing about... The Skybound Art Gauge and Grand Blue, it serves two functions. It doesn't serve any other function. Like, games like Guilty Gear, the tension does several things. You got your YRC, you got your other Roman cancels, you got your supers, you got other things to work with, like character-specific stuff. Like, you got a, a lot of uses for the tension gauge. You got a lot of uses for the heat gauge in Blaze Blue. Like, but, like, and the, the, the gauge in um, Persona 4 Arena, like other Arxis games. Uh, I can't remember what the gauge does in fires. I got blipped again. again. <laughs> I got other than, other than supers. I, I, I know it does something else. I just gotta go boot up fires again because it's been so long. But like in this game, if you don't get to do much with the with the um, the gauge. If if, I, if 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 I'm saying this right, if my words are coming out right, you don't get to do much with the skybound art gauge in this game. You can pull a skybound art. And like a, a, a super skybound art, or like the like the really strong one, like the super skybound art. So like for the skybound art, so you need the gauge to be 100%. And when you're at close range with it, you can perform like an enhanced version that deals more damage. Okay, fine. What about the super skybound art? Okay, so you need 100% the gauge. You need your HP bar to be lower, and then you need to you know obviously land it. But the thing about it is, like, you don't get an option to do these kind of things. Like, you know, like, in some games, like, oh, you need a gauge to be 100% to pull off a super move, right? A super ultra special move. And I get it. The super skybound art isn't an insta-kill. So it, it doesn't work, function the same way. But even so, some of these other Arxis games, you can just have the gauge at 50% before you pull off something else, you know? But, like, in this game, you need the gauge to be 100% to even use a super. And that kind of sucks. Like, honestly, it really kind of sucks. 
And plus, in this game, the Skybound art gauge doesn't look, doesn't go up high enough. It just doesn't. Sometimes I can end matches before the thing goes up to 100%. Like, it, it, it kind of sucks. But, you know, like, I don't know. I just don't like it. I don't like it. Like, if, if, if the Super Skybound art gauge was, like, 50%, yes, I can deal with it. And then, like, no, sorry, the Skybound art gauge could be 50%, and the Super Skybound art gauge could be 100%, and your HP bar could be 30% or lower. I can deal with that at that point. But not like not as it is now though. But eh, just whatever. That's my main gripe about the gameplay. It's just too slow, and the guy sky and the skybound art gauge needs to be faster, or or at least cut in half for the at least the skybound art and the super skybound could be 100. I can deal with that. Um, any other thing I want to talk about before I end this video? Um, I like the gallery. I like the gallery. Um, Honestly, the gallery doesn't really serve much of a purpose because, like, if you bought like the special edition uh, of the game, you can all artwork in the gallery is in the art book. So, like, I guess they weren't gonna let that one go to waste. So, I guess that makes sense. This is my first time actually getting a special edition of any game ever before, like, especially of a fighting game. So, forgive me if I'm new to this kind of shit. But, like, yeah, it's just, eh. I mean, yeah, the art, at least the art's really good. I like when art just like collaborates with other people who draw stuff and just makes art. Yeah, art like characters from like Mo well, Toshimichi Mori up in here. Like, you know, it's like, it's nice. Yeah, it's, it's nice. <laughs> it's just nice to see. This is really, really, really good art. And Yuki Kata drew some art. You know, people from Blaze Blue. It, it's really good art. And I like the little art book that, that I got with it too. Cause I can just look at the art anytime I want out in the book of the game. All the music in the game is in here. Um, you know, funny enough, there's one complaint I have, and this is not even this is not even like a major complaint. This is like a real dumb nitpick I have. There's a song called "Distant Skies," and every time you boot up the game, it's like a bombastic beginning before it you know softens up, and it only does that bombastic beginning when you boot up the game. It doesn't do that at any other point in while you're playing the game, and that kind of sucks. I don't know why. That's that's a nitpick. It's not anything major, but like I don't know why. Like it's it's not even part of the whole song. It's so weird. Uh, but anyway, you also got all the cutscenes here, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Gallery, serviceable. I also like the glossary in the mode. The glossary, you know, it'll give you like all like, the whole rundown, like, oh, this is the character, this is their English voice actor, this is their Japanese voice actor, and I like that. There are some games these days that just don't give a shit about their English voice actors. I'm talking about you, Blaze Blue. Um, this is the games these days where they just don't even bother crediting the English voice actors for anything. So I like that, you know, I, I can look in the story mode, not story mode, my bad, but I can look at the gallery and see, oh shit, Grant was voiced by Kyle McCarley, or oh shit, Jita was voiced by Erica Harlacher, or oh shit, uh, Catalina was voiced by Erica Lindbeck, or boom, I can look at um, uh, Charlotta, she was voiced by Christina V, or boom, I can look at Lil Wayne, he was voiced by Gretchen, you know, stuff like that, as simple as that. I can actually see the characters English voice actors without having to go out of my way to do so, like freaking Blazewood does, even though sometimes they're obvious. Then uh, they show some really good voice actors for these characters. One character I don't like whose voice is is Stephen Stephen or Stephen Fu as uh, Lancelot. I do not like Lancelot's English voice actor. I don't. I don't. Like they chose possibly the worst character to voice this character. I, I something about it just doesn't work. I also find it funny that Christina V voices both Sherry and Charlotta, which Fairy and Charlotta, which is just amazingly funny to me. Um, but other than that, all the other characters, they chose really good voice actors for these characters. I like that. Hell, I like some characters don't even get <laughs> English voice actors like Avatar. He's voiced by Takahiro Sakurai. He has like no English voice actor like all the other characters do. I like that. It's just, it's just, it's just something about it I like, you know, it's simple. They chose some really good voice actors for these characters. Uh, Hearing Ladiva voiced by Patrick Seitz is such an experience. I like Ladiva. She's really she's a really fun character. And I like that Patrick Seitz, you know, has to put on a more feminine tone to his voice in order to voice her right. And I like it. It's funny to me, but yet yeah, it works at the same time. Um, but yeah, it just it it's they, they chose some good actors, and I like this glossary. They tell you about number pad notations and shit like that. They tell you about all the skybound arts. You can watch the little movies about the skybound arts, you know, to see what they look like before you actually try them out. You can see like controls and button layouts. You can see like lore about the weapons, which I like. I like when they put extra care and just like saying, hey man, this is the weapon. This is what it, this is the weapon. This is the name. This is what it does. It shows that they put a lot of work into both designing and explaining the lore of these weapons. They also tell you like locations, like, oh shit, uh, these are Beelzebub's wings. Why do they, why do I need lore about the Be Beelzebub's wings? I don't. 
but I like I like that I know where it is now. Woohoo! <laughs> like these like you know places like you you go through in the story mode and you're like oh shit. So these are the weapons. They also give you like lore about like like the enemies you see in the game. They give you a little bit of um, stuff about the uh, enemies you see. Like it's stuff like that. It's simple, simple stuff like that. And I like you know they put the effort into the gallery. It's 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 honestly it's really simple, but like I like it regardless. So they did a pretty good job with the gallery and the glossary and stuff like that. So yeah, it's not an issue. Um, the arcade mode kind of, yeah, as I mentioned before, the arcade mode's kind of meh. I mean, you, you go to a couple matches, you can do on like certain high modes. At least you can customize your modes when you go in. So it's not really an issue. You can like gradually climb up or gradually climb down if you want to. Um, at the end of it, you get like a CG and some like um, items you can use to unlock stuff in the gallery. So it's not that too big of an issue, but. Other than that, that's everything I have to say about Grand Blue Fantasy Versus. Is the game worth it? I believe it is, but it's not worth it 60 bucks. If the game ever went on sale for maybe 40, yeah, I can justify it, but even then, the DLC kind of kills it. I would suggest, like, if you have 70 bucks to burn, buy the game in the first season pass if you want to. And because, like, at least with 70 bucks, I can at least say it's close enough to 60 to justify the purchase. Uh, but as it is now, it's not worth the 60 bucks it is. It, when the game goes on sale, like if you go, please wait till get. If you're one side to play the game, you know, make sure you do some research on it before you start playing it. And then on top of that, you know, obviously, you know, play the like. Just be careful, okay? The game is fun. I'm sorry. Ugh. I'm sorry. Um, the game is fun. I will admit that the game is fun. If you are into more slower paced games that you know you don't want to see a bunch of anime bullshit flying across the screen at you 24 7 if you want a more grounded game i suggest grand blue fantasy versus but i would only suggest it on a sale it is not worth the 60 bucks on launch and the fact that it's still 60 on launch but i don't know how much steam sales and whatnot um dictate it i don't know um but as it is now for like the playstation 4 no it's not worth 60 bucks not not even close to worth it but when it goes on sale i definitely recommend you buy it and at least try it out for yourself if you don't like it get your refund back or whatever you're gonna do just don't buy don't buy don't buy it don't buy it digitally you ain't getting that refund back but not nah, the point is but in all seriousness yeah uh but yeah that's it that's all i gotta say about grand blue fantasy versus i will see you all next time if you excuse me i gotta go play grand blue fantasy versus because I complained about it a lot and I kind of feel the urge to play it now. So, <laughs> see you all next time. Peace, everyone. I am out of here.